Well, hello. Haven't you missed this beautiful face? Um, hi, it's been a minute. Uh, I feel like that's every one of my videos, and um, that's just the case. <laughs> my bedroom's a little bit messy. Lola is snoozing. Um, I have been off of YouTube. I have been on Instagram, but let's not discuss my failures of consistency. Let's just go right on into it. So I asked on Instagram a couple weeks ago, actually, um, I said, I'm going to do a get ready with me. And I said, do let's do like a story time. Like, tell me what stories you want to hear. And of course, the number one thing is dating, 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 especially because last time I did a get ready with me, I left on the note that I was dating someone. So let's do a video on my nice piece of cardboard. I have <laughs> the things you guys asked me on Instagram. And I actually am getting ready for a date tonight uh, with someone that I've never dated before. So it'll be a first date. I figure let's do this. Maybe I'll show you my outfit if I have time and I'll be honest. Like it's, I, I literally have an hour and a half. I should have plenty of time, but you never know. All right, I'm gonna start with Hannah Lee. You know how I can talk. So let me try not to go way, way, way overboard. So how have you guys been? <laughs> um, I think I left off the last one. Let's see, the last one was right after my aunt passed away. The semester was still going. Uh, we didn't get to have her funeral until two weeks ago. Um, so it, it was very much like, besides the fact that she got sick at what, the end of January? I mean, it was just a very long process of hope and hope and sadness and hope and sadness and then ultimately grief. And um, I had mentioned that I had been depressed and, and I think, a lot of people have felt that way like there was, there was a certain amount of adrenaline that I had going for me early in the pandemic and then it just really uh dropped off and wow I need to remove this because it's chipping um it really just dropped off for me and I struggled struggled through this last semester in fact I, I pretty much have coined it my worst semester ever in terms of just feeling like my work wasn't my best and I wasn't feeling my best at all. I, I did not have a lot of motivation. I had lack of focus, etc. And some of that was for because of depression, anxiety, some of it. Um, I did get a diagnosis with sleep apnea because some of it could have been that. And some of it could have just been like, it's a pandemic. I've been working from home for over a year. It zapped a lot of the joy out of my job. And um, like, I just have to recognize that that is the case sometimes. Like when your job changes that drastically from me being in the classroom to me being at home every single day and teaching on Zoom with a bunch of black boxes, like I might not love it anymore, but yay, vaccine. Getting the vaccine really brought the edge off of some of my COVID related anxiety. And um, especially when my parents got it, and I felt a lot like I could breathe easier and um, and I am going to get back to teaching in a normal setting. So I'm, I'm excited to get back to teaching normally and seeing how that goes. Um, actually, one of the questions was about like, I, I have a lot of other people who work in higher education who follow me and they were wondering how, how it's been. And like I said, probably the worst semester. I really worried about, I don't know if you know this, but professors get teaching evaluations at the end of every uh, semester where students can let us know how things went. And of course, we're giving students our feedback the entire semester long. Um, but it's always been a little bit of a surprise to me how some students really do like, they don't tell you <laughs> how they feel until the end. And you're like, whoa, I could have fixed that. But I think also we, we know our own shortcomings. Um, like I've been teaching for a while now. I can tell, um, I can tell when I'm when I'm later on getting feedback to somebody that I used to be. Like I know my own shortcomings very uh, intimately, and so sometimes we just know our own areas where we feel like we're not doing our best, and we are like, are we going to get hit with that in the student evaluations? Uh, my student evaluations, I was like having anxiety about it. They seemed to be very pleased with the class got high high evaluations on everything. So I feel like, okay, I met their needs and I, and they did a lot of them told me that my class was different. My class is a small writing class. It's very different than their big lecture classes on Zoom. I think that saved me a little bit too. 
because I guess I just felt like I was giving them feedback later and, and part of that was because I had a death in the family, etc. But it all worked out. Alright, so I'm mixing two colors together for my foundation. I don't know why, this like this this mix works really well. So this first one is Pearly's BB Cream in medium tan, it's too dark for me. So I mixed it with this color, which is too light for me, which is Fawera in Porcelain. This is a little bit thicker, this is a little bit thinner. Together, they create magic. Um, so so that's been one thing, and, and um, I am excited because over the summer I'll still be working, doing some Writing Center stuff. Um, it's going to be online in June, and then in July I start teaching a summer course in person again. It'll be part way in person, part way um, asynchronous online, so like three days a week in person. Oh gosh, I'm trying a new sponge. I I, I, I don't like it. It's so dense. Um, okay, I'm gonna switch my normal sponge. My normal sponge is not clean. Oh, beauty, beauty guru, I am not. Okay, I'm sorry for my not clean sponge. I'm just very, you know, we do what we do. I can only care about so much. So anyways, I am excited because we are, I'm, I need to redesign my intro writing class. Um, our curriculum has shifted a little bit and I am excited about the shift. And so I'll be starting that next week and I think it's gonna be fun. I think it's also going to give me some energy back into a class that I've been teaching for a long time. And of course I've made changes every year to certain things, but never this drastic of a complete overhaul. So I'm very excited about getting a chance to do that and to focus in on it. Um, and then the summer I'll teach that. And then in the fall, I am teaching um, a higher level course with another person I'm co-teaching and I think we'll do well together. Um, and for the past two years, I've done that with the chair of my department, which um, as a lecturer who does not have tenure, that's kind of scary. <laughs> it gave me a lot of anxiety. And there was also just, you know, hierarchy stuff that made it awkward to really be a co-teacher didn't feel like even footing and it, and it wasn't even footing and I think I really missed um having the autonomy that I have when I teach on my own um so anyways but I have made the decision that I will not be working I currently direct a center I've made the decision to step down from director after this next year um typically Again, too much information that probably people don't care about. Typically when lecturers take on some kind of admin position like that, it's for a specific amount of time. And I had agreed to do three years. Uh, so my three years ends at that time. And I could have renewed it, but I'm deciding not to. And I'm very excited about that. So what that'll mean is that I will go back to teaching full time, uh, which is teaching three to four classes a semester, rather than managing the center. and. While the center is amazing and gives me a chance to work with students in a new way, lets me work with graduate students, um, it's, it's a very different job. Um, I also feel what I like to call decision burnout. And I think it's just because I happened to be the director when our school had a school shooting, the pandemic, just so many things that have happened, chair change, um, I I am burnt out from making decisions. And so I'm ready to move on from that. And uh, I'll still be in my department. I actually got um, a promotion to senior lecturer. So um, that's, that was really nice. I had to do extra things to get that. And um, it's an, you get awarded that if you've done the extra work it's a recognition but it's also a different um title and pay so i am happy with all those things i am ready for a year from now and i hope i don't regret it but there's always an opportunity to come back to the writing center in the future should i should i miss it and i think it's possible that i will miss it um but if i do i'd like to come back as associate director not the director i think I really just feel like, oof, I really just feel like I'm, I'm at the point now where, um, 
I don't want to be in charge of it anymore. And and being the person who has to delegate so much, I'm 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 burnt out from it. And editing me, um, going back to teaching full time will also allow me to do research on digital writing, social media writing, and bring in even stuff from fat studies, which is a field. So I think that I'm going to be able to find myself and where I belong in the research portion of uh, my work, which I'm excited about. I'm trying to figure out which bronzer to use. I'm, I typically love this bronzer. <laughs> this is by Lovecraft Beauty. I thought I bought some more, but to me, this looks like a different color. Maybe they're not. I'll try. I love the way that this um, blends, and I like this blush brush from Sonia Kashuk. Um, I just feel like this is a little bit warmer, but we'll give it a go. I just reorganized my makeup, but I need to keep working on it. I need to get little containers for where I have it at, and um, I probably need to declutter, but I did not worry about decluttering. I just worried about actually getting it in places. Okay, I'm gonna go with it. So that's where work is at. Um, I am not feeling fully satisfied. I feel burnt, I, burnt out. I, I think everyone probably does. I feel tired, but I think I'm moving towards where I need to be um, to find a better balance between work and life. Um, and that's that's simply where it is. You know, I'm starting to be able to do a little bit more stuff through Instagram and I want to have the ability to do it and not feel like um, it's pulling me away from anything else. You know, I, I have a career. I want to make sure I am attentive to my career, but I am finding it all overwhelming at the moment. Um, Okay, so people wanted updates on the guy I was dating because I think in the last one I talked about how I felt safe dating him and he was a really sweet guy. Um, none of that really changed. Very sweet guy. Uh, very sweet guy. So what happened was that um, we had seen, it, when my aunt was sick in early February, um, and I was gonna have to take care of my mom's dog and things like that, cause she was gonna have to go visit. We put off seeing each other. And so we probably went like three, four weeks without seeing each other. Um, and then whenever he came to see me after my birthday, he brought me my birthday gift. It was so sweet. It was so attuned to things I had talked to him about. I just really felt like he got me and I was very excited by it. And we were talking and you know, <laughs> red flag. Um, he never would bring up you know where we were at and what we were doing and is this anything you know of significance even though we were acting like we were boyfriend girlfriend kind of and so I was like so where is this going you know and we were talking and talking he was asking me where I was at and I said well I think like I like you you're the kind of person I would like to be with um I would be ready to have a relationship. Um, and he did not respond. I'm using a liquid blush. This is my first time using it. It was probably a bad time to try out a new thing. Can you even see it? I guess so. It just is kind of in a line and maybe that's not where blush should be. Let's see. So anyways, you know, he didn't, he didn't, um, reciprocate and he said that he was still at the point of getting to know me and I'm going to admit, like it took me about, um, an hour. <laughs> um, cause he was not going home. Like, you know, like he was hanging out with me took about an hour to get over that comment and get back to where I could have fun talking to him and stuff. Here's my thing. I'm never going to beg someone to like me and I'm never going to force someone to feel some way they don't. But when I know you don't feel that way towards me, I close off. You know, like 
you don't get it you don't get me anymore by the way i saw this on smoky glow it's ofra's um ofra's blush it's liquid blush in the color loyal she had a lighter color and i just felt like it wouldn't show up on me so i picked loyal um i think it's pretty um interested to see what it looks like without these lights on um but anyways so it's not like he told me he didn't want to ever date it's not like he said i want to end it he said he's still getting to know me and i think it's important to also know that like we met at the end of october but he lived a little bit farther away so we were only seeing each other every couple weeks and so um now i'm going to use jacqueline hill's highlighter called sparks um so when that happened uh i, I, I put on all this 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 packed this on way heavier than i'm used to and that's because i use a different brush Ooh. when that happened um it was hard for me to bounce back from and also hard for me to continue giving of myself and my openness when I don't think you're heading in the same direction as me. So I stopped giving as much, you know, I'm like, if either he will come back and say, I'm interested or this is going nowhere, staying casual and I don't really want casual. I think that's something that often happens to me and I'm trying to break down what in my patterns are allowing it is that things stay very casual, um, and and um, they seem content to stay in the same place for a long time. And what I realized with the person I was dating is that I had opened up my world to him a lot in that he had come to my apartment multiple times and stayed the weekend. He um, met my sister, we went out for Christmas looked at lights with my sister and her husband and child. Like I was really attempting to open my world to him, but the same wasn't happening on his end. I had said I wanted to go to his apartment and I, there was a chance once where I could go and then I decided not to go. This was when it was ending. And um, I need to watch out for that. I need, that needs to be something that I'm very cognizant of. Um, Cause I think it makes me feel closer. It makes me feel accepted when it's false because I actually haven't been brought into their lives. Um, and I'm not saying like he's a bad person who intentionally kept me out of my life. I have a dog, it, it was easier to come here, but it can lead towards me feeling something that they don't feel. Um, so anyways, uh, then in April, I was busy. I had a, lot, I had a couple projects that kept me away for a while. And um, we talked after that about whether or not he was gonna come visit again. And I brought it up again. I'm like, what are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing, you know? And for me, the, 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 the fact that it was not defined was starting to become a problem. And he said, I can tell like the fact that it's not like defined is bothering me. I said, yeah, like I don't, I'm not dating anyone. I'm not talking to anyone. And yet like, why am I not, you know, like um, if this is not gonna become something and also, when I first met him, I really thought he wanted to move out this way. And the last time I had met, talked with him, he had kind of indicated that he was putting down even more roots where he was currently at. And I was like, you know, I don't see myself moving away from here. I think it's just, it's just we're, we're going in two different directions. So we agree to be friends. And I don't know if I'm gonna hang out with him in person again or not. Um, he's a perfectly nice guy. He just was not interested in anything more with me than where we got to. And I'm not interested in giving more of myself um, than I already have. And especially if it's only for this like weird middle ground. Um, I don't like the middle ground. I find myself at the middle ground all the time. It is a habit I am trying to break. Um, by the way, this was Hourglass Arch and Dark Brunette. I actually really love this one called, this is pretty good. I really love this one called, um, it's by The Beauty Crop and it's in taupe, but I run out of it because I use it all the time. I actually just bought six of them. <laughs> 
because they're currently on sale and they're like, you better get it while it lasts kind of series. And they also had a 20% off, 25% off on top of that for Memorial Day. So about six. Um, they're typically $16. I got them for $10 plus 20. So I got them for like $7 each. And I was like, ding, 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 ding. Add them to the box. I need these. And if they're going away, I definitely want them. And I'm going to set my eyebrows with e.l.f. Clear Brow Gel. Um, so that's how that ended. You know, no big scandalous story. Just yet again, a guy who likes me and wants to spend time with me, but doesn't want to date me and see it go somewhere else. So, like, that's not enough. It's not enough. It's got to stop. Um, and I think around four months is where I'm getting to that point of clarity of, like, it, where is this going and how am I spending my time before I, like, yeet out of there. Okay. Someone wanted to ask about dating men smaller than me. I've I've always dated men smaller than me. I've been attracted to bigger guys, but I think every guy I've ever gone on a date with has been smaller than me. Um, it doesn't bother me at all. Um, I've dated really thin guys. I've dated chubby guys. Um, we all have different body shapes. I, I, I realize, like, that seems like such a, like... It's easy uh, answer when it feels kind of like dismissive, but I, I have to say, like, I'm bigger than most people. So, you know, me being bigger than another person is not necessarily a new experience for me in my life. It's pretty much um, the default. And so it just is what it is. Like, I used to get really like, oh, I used to, okay, this is where my insecurities did come out. I used to be like, have you dated a big girl before? Like, like warning them, like, things might be bigger than they appear you know like because there's always that notion of big girls catfishing people and appearing smaller in pictures which I think is a a fear that I then brought over to my dating life um now I just like I feel like a it starts the conversation off with insecurities um but also I've had enough good luck of men being attracted to me that like I don't have that fear anymore and all the only reason I ever came to that conclusion is just by dating more um, and having more experiences. Of course, I had some bad ones, but I have mostly, mostly had good ones. Um, and then, and, but even if they're smaller than me, they are attracted to me. So that's all that really matters. And I'm attracted to them. Um, somebody asked about Lola. Uh, let me just do all the dating ones. Okay, this one kind of made me sad, I'm not gonna lie. Someone said, how do you not lose hope while being plus size, single, and in your 30s? Thank you for the reminder. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I think, okay, well, here's the thing. And I don't know, I don't know what this says about me. Did y'all ever play The Sims when you were a little kid? Okay, Sims was like my first love of video games. Sims is where like you create your little characters, and you can do all kinds of things. My sister always liked to make a family and she'd build a whole family home and she decorated. She wanted the family to have kids and all this other stuff. She was very into the home. My Sims were always either single ladies or single ladies with one kid. You know, like that's who I like to play. And I think the only reason I tell that story is to say, there was definitely thoughts in my head that I would be married by now, but it has never been something I yearn for above other things in my life. And I feel free from that because obviously if it's something that I did yearn for, then I would miss it. Um, but also it means that my hope isn't resting on me being a married person. Um, my hope is really just rest on me living a life that I feel like is interesting to me, exciting for me, is pushing myself um, to try new things and honestly my to make good decisions and feel like I haven't hurt people like that's that's like something that if I started doing I'd be you know in a hole somewhere holding myself um so I don't have hope resting on me being married now I do date I don't want a super casual relationship I do see the benefit of a partner my siblings are all married I see them have their like person who is there for them I see all of that um but I don't think my life is bad because I haven't had it 
and it's maybe that's also because I've never been in love and so it's not like I feel like I have that person who got away or anything like how can I miss or feel like I failed at something when I've never had it you know um, I can't force it I, I'm very much into organic relationships I can't force it I would never pretend to have something I don't have and so I just haven't had it and and I don't feel like that's a failure I feel like I live a really cool life I gotta go turn over the wash to the dry I'll be right back I am actually the worst beauty person I'm using the naked um wild west I put on nudie first then standoff Gonna do something with some some color here in a second, some uh, some sparkle. Okay, I would like to add that, um, of course, I think it'd be cool to find my person. My experience has told me it's rarer than people assume, especially if you're really like. I don't know you you're waiting for that right connection and I mean I think it's nothing short nor, nothing short of a miracle when you do find it like I dated a lot of people who I'm perfectly content it not being them you know <laughs> my person not being them and so it makes me think like man when you do find it that's a miracle and you can't rush it you know and I think if I end up unmarried forever then it just wasn't meant for me and I will definitely live my life doing cool things, you know, other things. So I just added sparkle and I'm sure it would be more apparent if I packed it on, but also I'm going on a date and I don't want it to be like hurt, hitting them in the face. All right, someone asked, what do I wear on dates? How do I know what's successful? Um, lessons learned, etc." So I have, I have pretty much narrowed down my perfect day outfit however I might I might change it up today watch me regret that decision I might change it up today that was Hold'em by the way that's like the sparkly and now I'm doing a little Lidrerto which is like a dark brown just right here I don't know how to do makeup guys I'm just doing what I see on TV okay um so lessons learned or successful, etc. Okay, so I went on a date actually last week too. And the date last week, <laughs> I have come to find dates to be like, okay, as long as a person is nice, which is sad, you know, as long as a person's nice, why not spend an hour talking to them at the coffee shop? There is nothing harmful about learning about somebody. Last week I met up with a guy and um, I could just, I don't know, I think he might just be a very laid back guy, but we didn't have like super duper chemistry and um, we talked about things, but I just felt like I really had to work to drive the conversation and I, I, I don't know how he felt. Maybe he wasn't interested. Maybe that's why he wasn't driving the conversation. Maybe that's just part of his personality. I really don't know. Um, but eventually I left and I kind of was like, well, that was a boring date and I don't think I'm going to want to do that again um and he didn't message me the night of our date but a couple days later had messaged me and you know I was just like yeah we just were nice but I was like hmm. didn't get any romantic vibes like all right that's the end of it um I consider that a decent <laughs> experience they were nice to me there was no like I have to put you down to uh, end it, etc. And I will say the older I get, the more I think men don't do those things. Like, of course there will be. And, and you have to be, you have to prepare your heart for people to be rude. Um, because they're just rude people in the world. But, um, I, I find that happens less and less for me. And maybe I'm just getting better at choosing the people I go on a date with. Um, by the way, my eyelashes have gotten so sensitive that I can barely wear like any mascara. I can wear this, but it's not like impactful in any way. This is the Beauty Crop as well. It's their fabulous flocking lashes. It does not irritate my lashes though. I did get a lash lift about a month and a half ago. No, beginning of April. So now almost two months. And that really made a difference, but I'm not gonna go get a lash lift like every month. That's just 
that's just too much. Uh, but, you know, my lashes are just super sensitive these days. I can start, I will get very irritated very quickly no matter what mascara I put on. So, just gonna have to go with less impactful lashes and be okay with that life. Um, so I like to keep the first date to something that usually is coffee because then it's not too much of a commitment. It's a good way to talk and get to know one another. It can easily turn into dinner if you feel like the vibes are right. Um, tonight we're actually meeting at a brewery and I'm fine with that too because a brewery is more um, relaxed space. You're not expecting to like get drunk at the brewery or at least that's not how I've ever hung out at one. Um, so I think that's going to be pretty nice too. And, um, it's also beginning of summertime, so it's nice to go to a place that has, like, good indoor-outdoor arrangements, etc. I have, in the past, kind of been someone that's like, oh, I'll drive down to you. Now I'm very much like, let's meet in the middle. Oh, oftentimes guys will say they'll come my, more my way. Um, please never feel like them coming more your way means they need to be allowed into your apartment afterwards. Uh... You set the rules for whatever you're comfortable with. Um, I feel like I'm not speaking very well about what I've learned <laughs> about dating. I've just learned to like take it for what it is, you know, like not everything's going to equal out well. I do tend to meet people faster than I used to, meaning I don't talk to them for months and months and months and then meet. Uh, I prefer to meet quicker because I think that the in-person um, experience can be very, very different very different than the online thing and I've also learned for myself no more no more long distance um, and I've met people because of my Instagram etc um, not fun I don't think for me to have people have some image of me that they then meet in person and I've also felt like I've date gone on a date with someone who absolutely like follows a lot of plus size girls on Instagram I didn't realize at the time and you know tries to you know we are his what's the word conquest and um not into that ever again um the long distance thing i just realized that like i don't like uh when you're dating someone and you have to give them every weekend because otherwise they can't see you like i want to date someone where we go to dinner and then we go home uh, we go to a movie and then we go home like we don't have to have a whole weekend we can go and see each other in little spurts. I think that's gonna fit me and my lifestyle a lot better. So I'm no longer doing long distance. And that means like, you know, in Charlotte, you can live an hour away from someone and be on opposite ends of the city. So not that, but it means I'm not dating someone that's like two hours away plus ever again, which I've tried multiple times at this point and I just will not do it anymore. I think for me, even if it, the person could be like a really good match, it's just not a natural way for me to get to know somebody and it's not a good way for them to get to know me and it's not a good way for me to live my life where my relationship is only on weekends. I don't ever want that again. All of y'all's questions were about dating. <laughs> um, most embarrassing moment, okay. So when I read this, an idea popped in my head. It's a childhood idea, but it's an idea. So when I was a kid and we went to Michigan with my family, my family is originally from Michigan. I grew up in North Carolina, but they grew up in Michigan and moved down here in like the 70s maybe. Um, and then I was born in the 80s. So this is a lip liner by Patrick Ta called She's Humble Precision Lip Crayon. It's just a beautiful, beautiful thing. Let me remove the gunk I have on my lip. I always forget to remove it. And then I'm like halfway through editing. I'm like, ugh, you guys had a look at that. And yeah, you guys had a look at that. On one of our trips to Michigan, my family is in the antique car business and we decided to go to and of course Detroit antique like you know home of Ford etc um so we decided to go to a museum and uh in the museum at the very end they had this wall that was like for this kids area so imagine that you walk into this area there's little tables with activities and against the back is this black and white wall of like a cityscape with all these cars driving around and it looks a lot like um, a dry erase board with you know black outlines of everything and underneath it is markers i'm trying to even remember if they were expo markers and like coloring things maybe it was crayons i don't know coloring utensils 
We could tell that one had already been cleaned up. So in our minds, it's a white dry, dry waste board. It, they clean it up every time. Then every new day, someone comes in, you know, people come in and, and color it. My entire family, all four of us kids, I think my oldest sister was there, if not three kids, two adults, we're all coloring in this map. We're going to town, you know, coloring this map. Suddenly, a museum worker just runs to us. She's like, what are you doing? And my dad's like, well, we're, we're coloring. She's like, you're not supposed to color that, that's art. <gasps> oh my God, I, like just even saying that made my stomach crunch in on itself. Oh my gosh. I've never been so embarrassed. Uh, listen, I love to shop. My brother still wanted to go to like the the museum shop and I was like, let's leave, let's get out of here. I just needed to get out. I was so embarrassed that we did that. And you know, quite honestly now as an adult, I'm like, you should have done what we did because that's an awesome art installation, interactive ideas. But also if you don't want that, you should maybe switch up how this room is laid out because it definitely seemed to indicate that that was the activity to do. And also because it's been colored in before, we were not the first. But at the time, horrified, horrified. Like get me out of here, horrified. I'm trying to remember, I think this like puts it like makes it too lighter. I'm just gonna go over with the balm because it is uh, a matte. It looks more melony, I feel like on camera and in person it's a little darker. Okay, but anyways, most embarrassing moment. I still like, one, like you know, things that like you think back on and you're like, like, I kind of want to go back to that museum and see if it's still there, what has happened to it. Someone says, scariest travel story. Um, hmm. Oh, well, I, I guess I can tell a little bit of this. I don't know how much of this I can tell. Recently, I went on a trip and it was about um, a six, six and a half hour drive and I went by myself. And on the way home, I literally 30 minutes into my drive was getting sleepy and was doing all the things I could think of to avoid it. Listening to my favorite podcast, singing. I don't even like to sing. I don't, I don't sing normally in my car. Singing. I put on Spice Girls. I put on uh, the songs of my youth, like Sugar Colt, like emo songs to sing. I still remembered every single word and I was just falling asleep and I had to pull over. I've never slept in my car before. I had to pull over at a rest stop and sleep in my car. Woke up, drove 30 minutes, got sleepy again. Had to pull over again and sleep in my car. Woke up getting drowsy again. Like I'm only getting 30 minutes down the road before I'm getting so drowsy my eyes are closing while I'm on the interstate. And so I ended up having to get a hotel room um, around like noon. Got a hotel room, called my parents, told them what was happening. It's like, I'll sleep and you know, maybe around seven, I'll be able to wake up and do the rest of the way home. Woke up at seven. I was still exhausted. Um, got dinner, came back to my hotel room, wanted to see how I felt after I eat back asleep. I woke up the next day, 8 a.m., still tired. I had to leave by like 10, I think, or 10 or 11. Was still tired. Got back in my car, drove home, pulled over once to sleep again on the side of the road at like a rest stop. Then I realized my throat was messed up. So actually when I woke up in the morning, I realized my throat was messed up. My uvula was inflamed, really weird feeling. It's happened to me twice in my life, such a weird feeling. Um, I, I drove straight home to a CVS Minute Clinic and um, had to get medication. And I don't know if that was either an expression of my exhaustion or an outcome of my exhaustion or why I was exhausted. I thought maybe I had a like strep or mono or something. It was just, I forget what they call it, um, an ulcer on my uvula. I think maybe my stress was leaving my body or something. I, that was scary, but um, I need to dry my hair. I'll be right back. My camera seems to think it's full. We'll see how long we can do this. Um, 
I'm gonna use some of these root powder, but I'm gonna wait till I get it. I've I've not used this yet. Again, you know, living on the edge here, trying new things right before a date, always a great idea. Always a great idea. Um, okay. I don't remember what I was talking about. I think it was Scariest Travel. Alright, someone asked about Lola. Oh, Lola. That babe over there. Um, guys, she's showing her age, her aging, and it's um, upsetting me. So, Lola will be 11 soon. She's a lab mix. Um, and she seems to not be doing well with aging. I mean, she seems to have aches and she doesn't want to get up on the bed by herself anymore. She, she makes me help her up. Um, I have to help her up get in the car. Um, she has had multiple surgeries at this point. She had at one point a toenail that was like going off in a weird direction. I noticed it really fast, took her to the vet thinking she broke her toenail. No, she had cancer in her toe. So she's already missing a toe. <laughs> on one, one foot. Um, and then she also, this is very common with lab mixes, gets what's called lipomas, which are these little um, like fatty knots uh, on her, like little, little lumps. And she's gotten that since she was probably three years old when she got her first one. Most of them grow very quickly and then stop. Um, so she has those pretty much all over her body um and a couple of them on her arm like are in not great places but she's already had surgery on that arm once to remove some and i'm nervous about it and they said that one of them seemed to be connected to like potentially arteries and stuff like i, I think it's probably just best if we leave it alone as long as it doesn't grow anymore um and then she, even since she's a little dog she's had a leg that um she sometimes limps on and that's her left front leg where she also has the lipomas. And they told me that the reason that likely was the case. Oh, I'm curling my hair because it's been raining all day and we don't play with humidity around here. Um, they told me that was likely because I got her fixed too soon. Her hormones didn't fully develop her, her elbow bone. She's like a really thin elbow bone. I'm like, but I did it when they told me to. And, and you know, these are all lessons learned of having been a first time pet owner with her. You know, now I think I'd wait longer before I would get her fixed but anyways long story short being home with Lola every day over the last year um we have become quite the little pair she likes to ride around with me and I do my errands uh, she goes in the car with me almost every day somewhere she likes to be with me um she likes to be in the room with me as you can see she's a little lovey buggy uh she's very lovey she's very kissy and wants to you know cuddle and all that stuff but she is showing her age she gave me a scare a couple weeks ago because it, she had um a bad uti and i sat in the emergency vet for like five hours with her in the car before they could see us and that was exhausting but with some medicine she was fine and um i just i told her i tell her all the time like she's really good at growing those lumps but she doesn't have to show off to the class. Like she can stop now. She can stop at any time. <laughs> but um, she's doing well. You know, she's in her older years and it's starting to show and that makes me sad. It doesn't help that I live on, um, I don't live on the bottom floor of my apartment building. So she struggles a little bit like getting up the stairs and everything, which I don't like. Um, I had tried actually to move into a first floor apartment because of that and they just didn't have any available. So I ended up moving into uh, at least not as high up as I have been. Um, but geez, she's doing well. She just, you know, a little aging baby. Um, okay, is there any that I've missed or have I exhausted all my tell me a story about? Cause a lot of you guys were like dating, 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 dating. A lot of you said the tea, any story. Um, let's see. Oh, someone asked how my in-person market went. So I will have to admit this. When my depression got really bad around February, I think I made like one, maybe one more set of new styles and then I just stopped making earrings altogether. And um, I did have a market in March maybe um, and I sold stock that I hadn't sold online. And people came by and they looked at my stuff and they told me they liked it. One person said I should be charging more for it. 
Um, but a lot of the people that came by were um, told me that they liked smaller earrings. And I, I've been told by people online that they'd love to see some studs. Um, you know, I'm a big earring gal, not everyone is, but I also think you should make what you like, you know? Uh, so that was the feedback I got. I didn't sell very many earrings at it. It was also a like at a country store kind of sell. And I think a lot of the people that were set up there did not sell a bunch of stuff. The people that I noticed who sold the most of had plants and that made a lot of sense for where it was. Um, if I were to do another one, it'd have to be something that was more oriented towards women's fashion. Um, but also I think at the moment, I just need to get my life organized. You know, like I, I do wanna continue making earrings. I loved it and it was a very different creative outlet for me um, and I, liked seeing people wear my earrings it was a new way for me to connect with people too um but I've I have not gotten back to it and right now my goal is to get my apartment together because my apartment looks like a depression pit <laughs> and to be fair it's been a depression pit for me um and I'm just trying to work slowly on getting it into a place that I like it to be I have so many clothes that need to be sold. My sister-in-law said she's gonna help me. I cannot give you any dates on when that will be available because I'm not talking 20, 50 items. I'm talking 200 plus items, it's disgusting. Um, but I have to get those things sold and out of here. And, and a lot of it is, is newer stuff or barely worn stuff and I could use the money. You know, like I want to upgrade my car at some point, so I need to sell, um, I need to get that under control. And she said she'd help me, so that's my goal this summer, get my apartment. And I actually even have some ideas for earrings I've written down. Um, it's just a matter of sitting down and doing it. So far my evenings, my evenings have been when I get home, um, doing little projects or watching TV, you know. So I just need to get myself back in the mood to do it. And um, I'm sure it'll happen. I think I probably won't make as many as I had been making because I was probably producing too much quantity for my audience base, um, which is why I have a lot of earrings left over. I need to do smaller collections because at the end of the day, I'm not solely doing earrings. I don't have an account for my earrings. I could always do that if I decide to pursue it longer. But um, I'm, you know, I, I do all this other stuff too. And I think in priority level, my plus size stuff is most important to me for my own mental health, etc. Um, so that's what I want to make sure I reserve time for. My hair is like ridiculously shiny. I use this Briogeo shampoo. Um, and I just feel like my hair is reflecting the sun at the moment. What's happening? I don't know. I hope it's not like so shiny that it looks greasy or something. I do have thin hair, so I gotta watch the roots. Um, I actually have a couple products that I can use if that ends up looking weird, but geez, Briogeo, calm it down on the highlighting. But anyways, I think also like for a while there it was hard to get clay and that was frustrating because I couldn't even make the stuff I wanted to. And I think there's still a clay, clay shortage and I think it's just a lot of people got into it, but also of course all the supply lines from COVID stuff um, has affected every single industry. So um, it affected clay too. I'm scared. Let's try it down here first. Oof, it's white. I feel a little gray haired now at the top, but I also feel like I have this light on. And maybe I look less gray haired 
when I don't have that thing like beaming on me for filming. And let's face it, like, I really can't help myself. I always want to tuck behind one ear. I just, I just do. I like it. So I'm going to add an earring, I'm going to get dressed, um, and hopefully I have time to show you the final product. If not, if not, this will be my goodbye. Actually, if not, I will make sure to come back and do a little update on how the date went. Um, I still gotta feed Lola, take her out, give her some dinner, have her eat something, maybe put some yummy stuff in it. She is still yawning, or she's still sleeping. But it's probably dinner time, and I know Lola needs to eat something, and I might put some yummy stuff in it. Yeah, maybe put something good in it, maybe a chewy. Maybe a cookie. I can't believe she's not reacting. Maybe she just like tuned me out because she didn't want to hear me film. I'm like, rude, rude, rude. a chewy I could you get you some dinner if you want to eat put some yummy stuff on it do a cookie a, ch a chewy is that what you want this girl is spoiled rotten be right back and now that Lola is finally awake I remembered perfume for a date Arizona by Proenza Schuler, who I'm pretty sure I'm mispronouncing. This is very much a date scent to me. I do like some Marc Jacob Daisy, but this one, it just has a little, I'm, I'm, I'm overly spraying myself, sorry. Has a good date smell, I just like it. Also, most of the time I do setting spray, but I don't have my good setting spray. Do I risk it with this? I feel like my skin looks okay. Um, I'll risk it, okay. Wow, I don't know if that got on me at all. Um, and then deodorant. Don't forget deodorant before a date. Hello, good morning. I look like poop. Um, I forgot. Well, A, I ran out of time. Lola, of course, I had to take her out before I left. And she really, you know, had to pick the perfect spot. And so, um, you know, I did not want to spend any more time trying to take pictures of my outfit when I, you know, was going to be late if I did that. So, got to my date on time. Um, had a good time. I'm, I'm definitely intrigued. And I would say, visually I'm attracted. Good conversation. Um, I don't know anymore what's a match. I am intrigued. It's very respectful, kind etc. I am intrigued for a second date and we actually already made plans. We're going to see each other on Wednesday. So, um, looking forward to that. Uh, I did not take any pictures of my outfit. I have to say my outfit was not that great. Uh, I kind of have like a staple outfit, which right now is a black shirt. Um, it's one of those ones that like cinches in the middle, you know, little sexy number, high waisted jeans, and like sandals or boots depending on the season uh with some jewelry very simple shows off um my body shape and i've literally never had it go wrong uh but last night i was hurrying i just felt like i wore croc flats guys i wore croc flats to my date um you know 33 and just don't give a apparently is how it's going uh so anyways 
me and Lola, I live very close to town, so me and Lola, um, we just left for a second to go get some coffee. And I figured I'd update you really quick because I really didn't end it. And um, yeah, good date. Uh, gonna see him again and we'll see how it goes.